Hello my friends, welcome to another video. So for this one, as you can tell by the title, um, this is going to be my October wrap up. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the when I filmed my October TBR, rather than doing punishments, I have decided that I'm doing rewards. So when I film my October TBR, the reward if I complete the October TBR pile that I had, which was 11 books, um, actually there were three others, so 14, <laughs> I'm tired, um, 14 books total, but 11 were specifically on my TBR. And if I were to read those, then I would get to my reward myself. The item I chose as a reward for myself was a backpack that had symbols from Harry Potter as far as broomsticks, the glasses and the lightning bolt scar, a snitch, and it said the word love on it, it had the Deathly Hollow symbol, I believe. Um, so that would have been my reward because my backpack that I currently use that holds allergy medicine, like an EpiPen and allergy pills, if I start to have any sort of a reaction, as well as things to help if I start to become overloaded with my autism as far as sounds and stuff. I've got things to help me with that in the backpack. So definitely too much stuff to keep in a purse. And then with the issues that I have with my back, um, it's better to distribute the weight more evenly on my back. So, but the backpack I have, I got from a book box and it's just a cheaper quality backpack, obviously. So it's just starting to fray. Um, let me show you. So like there's right here. Um, you can't really see it, but there are threads there. Um, there you go. You can get to see a little bit. Um, and it's like, if I pull those, is it just going to create to where the, there's going to be a hole that's going to come in? Um, so it's just a cheaper backpack. Um, it's seeing it's starting to, even on the bottom, there's a little thread starting to, and I don't dare pull that because that's all I need is stuff to fall from the bottom of the backpack. Um, so it's just a cheaper backpack. So I wanted something a little bit better quality. So that would be my reward. Um, would just be a backpack that I look forward to that is definitely better quality. So these are the books that I wanted to read. <laughs> Too much to really hold. Um, so these are the books that I wanted to read for the month of October. Did I complete the, my October TBR? Do I get my backpack? No, I don't. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into what I did read and I'll show you what was left that I didn't, that will be added back to my bookcase or um, my closet where I've got another stack of books. Um, but let's go ahead and let you know what I did read. So the first book that I read was The Kids Are Gonna Ask I, by Gretchen Anthony. I really enjoy this one. Um, I'll, this is one I'll definitely read more by this author. You follow um, two teenagers, Thomas and Savannah McClare, um, and you get the point of view from the grandmother as well, who is, I just blanked on her name, Maggie. Um, so Maggie's daughter, who is the mother of Thomas and Savannah, has passed away. And Thomas and Savannah decide they want to try and find out who their biological father is. So they come up with the idea to do a bod podcast. And what's interesting is you will have in this book regular novel-like chapters, but then it will go to a part where it is more in podcast form. Um, I'm trying to find one and they're labeled. It's So the name of the podcast is The Kids Are Going to Ask. Um, and now that I'm looking for it, it's like I can't find this stinking <laughs> excerpt. Here we go. Nope, that's an email. So you get some, the other thing is you do, so it's a little bit of mixed, I guess, mixed media because you do get some emails from one person that's mentioned to one of the characters um, as well. You get forms of text messages between a character and one of their friends. There's voicemails that are left, and so you get the beep to leave a message um, type of a thing. And then again, some excerpts in the book that are more in the podcast form. I did not listen to this on audiobook. I think this would be great on audiobook if the narrator does it well, but where I did not listen to it, I cannot say one way or the other. I just can't find those excerpts now and it's really bugging me because they're in there. Um, anyway, so, oh, here we go. 
<laughs> finally found it. Um, it's this one's a couple of pages, so it so it does come up with like the kids are going to ask, and it says that it's who the the who's spot sponsoring. Anyway, um, it says it's a Guava Media podcast, so the people that are producing or helping to produce and backing Thomas and Savannah up with the podcast. Um, obviously, with media, there's concern that they're doing it for a different reason rather than helping them find their parents that maybe they're in it for more than money and exposure and things like that which you'll find out and so it just kind of goes like savannah and then it gives a little excerpt with what she says and then thomas and what thomas says and and things like that so i thoroughly enjoyed it, it was a very quick read uh, i loved how it ended um yeah, I, I highly recommend this. This is definitely worth a read in my opinion. Um, so yes, and I, and I will definitely uh, look at picking up another book by this author. The next book that I read was Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. This was um, a collection of short stories for middle grade. Um, obviously horror stories, as you can probably tell by the thing. Um, they're collected, it says these are stories collected from folklore, but they are retold by Elvin Schwartz. There are drawings on this by Stephen Gamble. I did find the drawings more creepy than the stories, but I gave this a four star and mostly out of purely nostalgic reasons because I just remember absolutely loving this and the fear and creepiness that I felt as a child when I read this. So I absolutely love this. It was very fun to go back through. Um, these normally short stories sometimes I have a hard time with because there's not enough plot and character development. But short stories like this, where they're meant to be short and just kind of give you a little creepy, spooky factor, I thought were fine. Um, but they just didn't, obviously, because I'm older, didn't have the same creepy factor. I did find the pictures much more creepy than the stories, but still absolutely loved it. Um, four stars, again, mostly out of purely nostalgic reasons. Then we come to the next book that I absolutely loved was the Tale of Halcyon Crane by Wendy Webb. So you have, um, this is a gothic paranormal. Um, you have Haley who finds out that the life she grew up knew, knowing, the life as she knew growing up, um, certain things that she was told, turns out they may have actually been lies. And so she goes to, what is the name of the island? It's in the Great Lakes that I remember. So in that region of the United States. Um, let's see. Where's the middle of the remote island in the middle of the Great Lakes. I can't remember the name of the island. Anyway, so it's an island. Um, and some of the people they look at her and she just resembles this person that they knew for years so much that it kind of creeps some of the islanders out thinking that what they knew as the truth may have been a lie or that she's a ghost or etc and things just happen i thought it was very well written wendy webb i find and in my opinion is very good with building atmosphere so if you want a very good atmospheric read wendy webb is definitely one to look at um there, I just thought the relationships that she developed with this um, lawyer and this person, other person that runs a coffee shop and one that runs a, like a, a hotel for tourists during their on season, just, it was just amazing. I mean, there wasn't anything that I could say was a real twist because as the twists, twists, plot twists were coming, um, and we're leading up. I kind of figured things out with certain hints that were dropped. But it did not detract from the book in any way as far as me figuring it out. Because I I would have a suspicion and my suspicion would be partly correct. Um, so there was still some stuff that I wasn't 100% there. But probably about 50% there. But I, again, Wendy Webb um, I, is definitely an author that I will always pick up. An automatic buy author. I just love her books. So I gave this, I think I gave this five stars, if not five, a very high four. Let me actually look. 
Yes, so I did confirm. I did look it up. I did give this a five star as I suspected. Um, I don't know if I'll ever give Wendy Webb's books less than that. Um, I don't know. I just absolutely love her writing and just how atmospheric it is. And I just felt like I was in that town, that small island, especially with the fog coming um, and things like that. And I just highly, highly recommend Wendy Webb, especially if you like Victorian um, gothic paranormal stuff. Yes, definitely Wendy Webb. The next book I came to was another short story book, More Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Um, these are also various short stories that are collected from folklore, still by Evelyn Schwartz, drawings by Stephen Gamble again. This one I did not enjoy as, as much as the first one. I gave this just three stars, again, being because I know I'm not the target audience with it being a middle grade. Um, and so I knew that the creep and scary factor was just not going to be at the level that I would want, um, having had much more years of reading. Um, so, but I still enjoyed it. It was still fun. There were just one or two stories in here that were just slightly kind of put me on edge just a little bit, but nothing too bad. Um, again, just, yeah. So, but I still enjoyed it. Um, definitely not... And I think the reason I did not enjoy this one more or as much as the first one is mostly just, again, the nostalgic reasons. I didn't really, I remember picking this up, but after reading the first one, I was too scared to continue. Um, so I never really read any of these. Again, I think the drawings, in my opinion, were creepier than the actual stories in there, but I still loved it um, as far as that goes. But again, not as much as the first one. The next book I read was Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. This one I ended up giving a two stars. This is the second in the Village Villains series by V.E. Schwab. I've heard a lot of people talking about this being a duology, but according to Goodreads, when I pull it up, this is actually supposed to be at least a trilogy. As of right now, it's not titled. There's no release date, no cover or anything like that. Um, but I do look forward there. It definitely left off to where there could be a third book in this series. So you're following a couple different points of view. Um, some still you still follow Victor and Eli a little bit, mostly Victor, um, as he's still with Sydney and I forgot the other dude's name, but the other character that's really introduced is Marciella. Um, she's a piece of work. <laughs> um, Definitely not my favorite character. Victor is still my absolute favorite character in this series. And so I do hope there's a third one. I hope what I see on Goodreads is correct because I do want to follow more of Victor. I just really like Victor. Um, so there's just... I mean, you, you have this government organization that's been created and it was created, I think, in the, in the first book. But you find out more about that organization that was created to put a stop to or find more about these extraordinary people that have these superhero-like powers. I mean, so you're following a little bit more and have more insight into the director and of the organization and things like that, which was actually really interesting. Um, my there another character that was introduced was named June and her I really liked her so if the third book follows Victor and June I would like that um, I would like to get to know more of June as well um, she she's a sassy pants <laughs> and I I loved it gave this four stars and I will definitely again I really liked V E Schwab's writing so I'll definitely pick up more of her books. As you may have seen in some of my other videos, I do have more books of hers to read. So I do look forward to that. But just, this was fun, uh, fast paced, definitely kept me engaged enough to keep going. And it does kind of like, um, with like Big Little Lies that I mentioned earlier, or in another video in a vlog, that it just kind of like a countdown you have. Except this doesn't end, start with somewhere and then you're, like gives you like the end and then you're, back several months and working towards it you are just it starts out with um what's the first title it says just six weeks ago three years ago so you're just following different so it kind of goes back and forth as far as this was three weeks ago this was six years ago this was five weeks ago this was that and it just and that difference as far as the three weeks and the four years 
as the story goes on, it gets smaller and smaller to the point where it's like one day ago, three hours ago, three hours to this, something like that. Um, last evening, then what's it last night? So it just, the, the time difference gets smaller, the closer to the ending that you get. Um, it's where this is the second in a book. It's just hard to talk about without spoiling anything in the first one. So I'm going to leave it at that. I do highly recommend this series. I thought it was very good. And I know a lot of people have said they don't like this one as much as the first one. I do stand by that as well. I do prefer the first book. Uh, but that tends with series tends to be the, the norm, I guess, where the second book is really never as good as the first one. Um, but I still thought this was very good, very entertaining, and d still definitely worth a read. The next story I read was Scary Stories 3, More Tales to Chill Your Bones. Again, collected from various folklore that's been retold by Alvin Schwartz. Um, I did double check my Goodreads. The first book, um, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, I actually gave five stars again, purely, I think I said four stars, but no, I gave it five stars again, purely for nostalgic. The second one, I'm correct, I only gave three stars. This one I gave four stars. I think I just kind of went middle of the road. I did not enjoy this one as much as the first, but I did enjoy it more than the second. So that's why I gave this one four stars. I just, I think the Stephen Gamble character, person that did the drawings did such a good job with the creep factor of these, um, of these pictures. Just, yeah. So the, you're just following, you're just following, you're not real, you're just following these short stories. Um, and it's, I don't know. It's just entertaining, entertaining enough that I, I, I don't really know how, how to describe it. It was just very good. Um, I do recommend them, but again, where I'm not the target audience, and if you are not the target, target audience, be aware, you may find it a little dull and boring, but if you've read these before, definitely, definitely worth a reread, very reminiscent of my childhood and what scared me and stuff like that. So I just gave this a four star, and now we'll go ahead and move on to the next book. The next book I was able to complete for the month of October was The Boatman's Daughter by Andy Davidson. This was an arc that I had won from a Goodreads giveaway. Um, this, I only ended up giving a two star. The first 50 to 75-ish pages, I would say, in my opinion, were, even though that was a little dull, obviously because it's building up. I, I don't know this this book I went in from the description that I've read before as far as like the synopsis that's in the book um, with a different feeling of what the boys are getting off of the bed so you're gonna hear them coming up and down the stairs but I just had a different feeling and a different vibe as far as what was delivered so I was very disappointed I did think I mean I'm, I'm going to give it the reason why, part of the reason why I gave it a two star instead of lower, which is what I would have wanted to have done, was because of how beautifully written it is. I did, it is very lyrical, very, and I thought the descriptions were just wonderful. Um, there are some gory bits, which I loved. Um, <laughs> I do like that, but I just wanted more from it. Um, I was just... Yeah, I, I don't know. I was just very disappointed in it, and I thought there it just there could have been more. It didn't need to be as long as it was, but it was beautifully written. Definite trigger warnings for the gore um, and attempted sexual assault, drugging, and kidnapping of a child as well. Um, so definite, and I just it's classified. I've got my Goodreads right here as a horror book, I just didn't really see the horror. I expect when someone tells me something's going to be horror, I expect to be scared and creeped out at some level. I did not get that. I found it predictable the whole way. Any of the supposed plot twists did not surprise me. Um, 
supernatural elements, yes, there were. I appreciated those. I didn't think there was enough of them in my opinion. I don't see the thriller aspect of it. I just, the Gothic, yes. Southern Gothic, well, it's based in the South, supposedly, or Southern Texas, I think is what it was. Anyway, but I just didn't see it. I am going to look up, you know what, let's, while I've got you, let's Google and see exactly what the horror, horror book genre definition is. And we'll see if it in fact delivered or not. It says, according to Google, and this is a quote from Wikipedia, it says horror is a genre of speculative fiction, yes, which is intended to frighten, scare, or disgust. It did not frighten me. It didn't scare me. There were three, four, two, three, I can't even remember. But there were some parts that, they, yes, they were gory. And I can see how someone would be disgusted with that. But I like the gore. It did not disgust me. It did not deliver on the frighteningness and the scariness. Um, let's see. It says, let's see. Horror story, let's see, is a piece of fiction and prose or the length. Shocks or even frightens the reader. Induces a feeling of repulsion or loathing. Yeah, I, I kind of loathe the book, but I will definitely not be picking up anymore. I just, as much as I like, again, I thought the writing was beautiful, but I just, I don't, I was not, it did not deliver on the horror. It did not deliver on the thriller aspect for me. So two stars. And this is one I am going to unhaul. I am not going to have unhaul videos. Either I just don't have the space to save any books that I'm going to unhaul. So if I say I'm going to unhaul a book, I'm going to save a book until I do a monthly wrap up. But then this book is going to go away. So I'm not even going to put it in the same pile as I'm doing this wrap up. So guess what? That book's unhauled. And I'll officially get rid of it in a little bit. Anyway, let's move on from that disaster of a book, in my opinion. The next book, I just want to make sure I give you the correct star rating so I have my Goodreads on my phone on my lap here. So this, the next one I read was Separation Anxiety by Laura Zygman. Contemporary um, book. I enjoyed it. I will definitely look more at some of this author's more work. Um, this was a little, you know, I've never understood when people talk about subjects being triggering. I've never really understood. I mean, I do understand but I've never experienced that. So I never understood the feelings and stuff um, to a personal level. I hope that makes sense. Um, I understand the need for the trigger warnings. Uh, this is one, because I've never had an issue, this is one that I will definitely be more careful picking books up that deal with anxiety in the future. That's because I thought this was written well enough and is, well, the description was good enough um, and realistic enough as far as the description of anxiety that people feel and the thoughts that they have um, and things like that and the emotions that when I was reading it, when they were talking specifically about the anxiety that um, Judy was experiencing and her husband, I could feel my anxiety start to start to ramp up a little bit. So this was definitely an uncomfortable read as far as that goes. I thought this was realistic as far as the anxiety was described. So this one you're following, Judy. She was has a children's book that she wrote called There's a Bird on My Head that was very successful. Um, she was not able to replicate any other book and so her career kind of took a nosedive according to her. Um, and so you're dealing with that, you're dealing with the um, and this is all in the flap that the drugs that her husband takes to try and deal with his anxiety, um, the issues that the teenager is starting to experience, um, as well. And I just, I just thought it was well enough done. I did give this a three stars with contemporary. I tend to go three stars and that's, um, just because it's like, it's not, I enjoy it enough to keep reading it and to definitely read more by the author and it is very enjoyable, but I tend to enjoy the more thriller books. 
<laughs> you know, the ones that are more on the edge of the seat. These are very soothing and relaxing, although unfortunately this one did raise my anxiety. Um, but for me, a three star is a very good rating for a contemporary, but I loved it. Definitely worth the read. Again, I have mentioned in a vlog, there's a chapter, my favorite chapter in this is the one that is labeled the secret pooper. Um, you just got to read this book to find out about the secret pooper. You do try and, f and wonder, it piques enough curiosity that you wonder who the secret pooper is at this school, um, that where it is. You do find out in the last chapter or the second to last, within the last three chapters, who the secret pooper is. And it's actually kind of sad that really, that was kind of just made me go, oh man, I just feel, so it did invoke emotions. So I think I am actually, you know what, let's do this. I am actually going to go into my Goodreads because the more I talk about it, the more I enjoyed and, and talk about how much I've read it. Even though it did raise my anxiety a little bit, it did evoke good emotions. Well, good. It did evoke emotions from me. And I think that's the sign of a good book is when you do get those emotions, you do become emotionally attached and involved in those characters. Even though it's a standalone, you still care for the characters and want to see what happens. So I said I gave this a three star. I think I'm actually going to raise that to a four star. Um, there were points that it actually made me laugh a little bit because of how relatable it was. And I think because it evoked those emotions, um, that's why I'm going to raise it to a four star. So this I'm actually going to consider a four star, um, which is rare for me with contemporaries. Um, I do love the, con like reading, enjoying reading the contemporaries, but I've never given one higher than three star. So that's a first. The next book I read when I, if you watch my vlogs, you will have seen that I said I gave this a three star with thinking more about what bothered me. I am going to knock it down to a two star. It is a classic. I do like classics, so it does kind of hurt me a little bit to lower that rating, but Stuart Little by E.B. White. I, you're following the mouse as he lives with the family. They treat him like a human, this mouse. Um, so he has grown up with certain expectations as far as how he should be treated and things like that. They obviously, his human parents have made accommodations in the house so that he can shower, brush his teeth, get the food and things like that. Um, I did like the fact that there's a talking mouse. You do hear thoughts of a cat and a bird and other characters. Um, and that the mouse can actually talk and interact with humans. I loved that. What I did not love is that there is a part where Stuart makes a choice and you are following as he goes through with this choice. You're not seeing the effect that it had on his family, um, which you are following Stuart, so that is understandable, but it's like, it just kind of, it gives the vibe of the story that the choice that he makes was fine. Um, is, is the vibe that it gives that it was a good choice to make. And he just, Stuart just kind of rides off into the sunset at the end of the book. That's my problem with it. There was no consequence for the choice that he had. And I know it's a short book and it's a children's middle grade, but this particular choice that the character made, I think in my opinion, again, I do not have kids, but I do know when I think about how I would have taken that, if I would have read this at that, that stage in my life as a child, I probably would have been thinking that is something that I can do when certain things arise and there's not going to be any consequences and things will be fine where it is a very bad choice to make. And so that's my problem with that. On if you've read this, you may know. So, I mean, it, it was very sweet. It, it's, there are some good characters in here and I just, but I just can't get past that one, one choice that he made that there's just absolutely no consequences and he just rides off into the sunset. So that was my problem with that one. We're going to move on. The next book that I read, I do not have because it was on my Kindle. And I read this throughout the month of October with my mom. We just kind of took turns reading. It's a collection of short stories and I'll put insert an image of the book. It's called out to get you 13 tales of weirdness and woe by Josh Allen. This is 
short, very much like the Scary Stories books. It is short stories. It is aimed at the middle grade. Um, and these are spooky. And with reading them, I actually really liked, and I think it's just because it's the first time I've read them, the stories. They There was more of a creep factor. Nothing was all really scary. Again, I'm not the target audience. So... But I do think if I would have read these when I was at that middle grade age, they would have been scary for me. You're finding one of the stories, a teenager, and when I say teenager, I'm like talking age 13, 12, 13. So middle grade age, one child meets the devil. You have one story where they talk about a shadow trying to kill the human being the shadow is attached to. Um, someone just completely vanishes. Very, my mom hit the nail on the head. If you've seen Twilight Zone, it's very Twilight Zone-esque as far as the stories and the writing style. Um, so it had that kind of a vibe to it. So enjoyable. I gave that one, I think four, let me go back here to Goodreads. Four or three, I gave it four stars. I thought it was a very enjoyable. I think part of the four star reason to be honest, was because that I took turns. I would read one story one, one night and then my mom would read one story to me. And then I would read one of the stories to her. So we just kind of went back and forth. Very fun to do that as a build up to Halloween. So the last story that we read, we planned it just right. The last story we read on Halloween. And so it was just awesome. Um, and I think the last story in the book was the best. Um, but I ended up giving that a four stars. I think just because of the interaction that I had was just so enjoyable with that. And so that's part of the reason why it was so high, which is fine. Um, and my mom mentioned it. She looks forward to Halloween next year. So in 2021, she bought a physical copy of this book. I only, I bought it on my Kindle. Um, so it's on my Kindle, but the cover is really cool. So she has a physical book, the cover. So on, it has a, um, tree and it says out to get you so it's in the middle of the tree and that cover actually glows in the dark at least the hardcover I don't know about any paperback um, version would do that or not but the hardcover does the tree and the words out to get you glow in the dark so that's really cool I've never seen a book do that so that was definitely great move by the publisher for that one so <sighs> The last book that I read for the month of October, and I finished it on Halloween. Technically, I finished it November 1st as it was like four in the morning. And that was like for the last 50 pages of the book. So I'm counting this as an October accomplished read. I um, mean, that is, again, that is The Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. Twist in the book I was not expecting. You do know right off that someone has died. Um, you don't know how and who all was involved. Um, how that person died, I can definitely understand how it happened. There was a twist I didn't see. And you do not know at the start, you do not know who it is that has died. I was thinking this whole time it was this person and then certain things would be said and I go, well, maybe it's not that person. Okay, so it's gotta be this person. No, I was wrong the whole time. I never guessed the person that died. And, and that's what I like to see. I just, where I can guess and I get involved enough that it's like you're, or you're invested enough that you think, you know, if you figure it out, great props to you, but I didn't figure out who it was that had died. And I thought the twist was great. Um, definite trigger warnings in this though, for sexual assault, um, maybe something that would have, have started out as consent turns to more on the rape side, um, spousal domestic abuse, bullying, and the bullying, I would say is like adults bullying each other, uh, definitely alcohol consumption, but definitely one of the triggers, um, if you have little kids, I don't know how triggering this would be, but definite bullying with five-year-old kids, so kids in kindergarten. Um, but I loved it. Um, I, I just, yeah. So I definitely look forward to reading more of her books. So that is all I read for the month of October. So the books that I did not get to was 
Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes, and I'm just going to mention these and not go into them. How to Train Your Dragon, The Complete Book of Dragons, A Guide to Dragon Species by Cassandra Cowell. So I did not get to that one. Newt Scamander, this is a movie scrapbook. Did not get to that one. The other one I did not get to. Oh, I'm so bummed I didn't get to this one, but this will definitely end up on a TBR in the future. Is Daughters of the Lake by Wendy Webb. Um, which this will just is just going to be added back on, definitely back onto my bookshelf because <laughs> I do want to get to this one. So I'm bummed I did not get to these four that I did not complete my TBR. So I do not get my reward. I do not get the backpack, but I will add that at a future TBR. I will try to get that backpack again <laughs> at some other point. So that is what I read. Overall, I am very pleased with what I have read and the amount that I have read for the month of October. So with that, this is the end of the video. If you're so inclined, please subscribe. I would love for you to join the family and hit the like button if you enjoyed any part of this video. You will find information as far as the books that I've read and links to the Goodreads for a more um, description and to see other people's reviews and what they thought of the book. Um, so I'll have links to the Goodreads for those books that I've read. Um, as well as what I didn't read. I'll go ahead and link those below as well. Um, and I hope you were doing well. And until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I will talk to you later.